Hey everybody, welcome back to Spisty Cakes by Mary. This week I am going to show you how I made this buttercream floral crown cake. The recipe I'm using this week is an amaretto cake. It's a white cake base with amaretto in it and I'm going to be filling it with a whipped chocolate ganache that is mixed with a little bit of American buttercream. And I'm going to dam it with just regular chocolate, it's semi-sweet chocolate ganache to help keep the filling inside the border. I like to use a ganache as a dam on my taller cakes and this one's going to be four layers because of gravity. Gravity tends to pull it down and you don't want your fillings to be squishing out the sides. I'm using that same hybrid combination of the ganache and the buttercream to do the crumb coat. It will firm up enough to give it some more stability, but not be hard to eat because it's dried firm. Now I know this looks a little lopsided, but when it sets up, I will have a chance with the buttercream to straighten it all out. And I will set it in the fridge to firm up after I get the smoothing done so that I can work with it. Make sure to try to get those sharp corners at every opportunity so that you can uh, have a, a better foundation to work with when you're trying to do the subsequent coatings of buttercream or whatever frosting you're using. It's easier to do those things from the beginning than to try to create a sharp, a sharp corner later. It can be a little more challenging later on. And this is just my regular American buttercream all butter based buttercream that I like to use. I ended up doing three coats of this but I think I only show one maybe two because you know once you've seen it you've seen it. You can see that I didn't put enough buttercream at the top, but I can always go back and add that, and I believe I did. Yep, there I'm adding some more to the top. You want to get your sides straight just like the top. When I'm scraping the top and bringing it into the center, I like to use a spatula or a um, scraper that's not any wider than the width of the cake. Otherwise, you end up pushing buttercream out towards the edges more instead of into the middle. And then you spend so much time going round and round and round that cake, trying to get it all leveled out and blended in. And like I said, I ended up doing another, at least one more coat of buttercream to finish it off. So it was a little smoother than even this. Now 
I'm using a mint green buttercream that I put in the piping bag and just cut the tip. I didn't put a, a piping tip in there because I'm just using it to uh, apply the buttercream to the cake and kind of more, be more intentional on where I was putting it. I'm gonna do a texture on just the bottom half so I don't need to put any more buttercream on the top. It's fine the way it is. And put on a healthy amount because you're gonna be scraping a lot of it off. And you don't have to be perfect about this part because well the with the scraper you do but when you're just smoothing it out to be before you use the scraper just take enough of it off so that it's a more flat surface don't worry about getting it perfect and fill in any holes as you go because buttercream tends to get bubbles as we know You want to do this technique as fast as you can without going too fast actually because you want it to look good but at the same time you don't want the buttercream to start setting up on you if you're having problems just go one more turn around and then it should be fine and you can also heat up your metal scraper in hot water and that would help too I'm using a 1M star tip with a burgundy buttercream and I'm going to do rosettes to start off with. I start with the darker color first, the color that I kind of, the pow color. Start off with that first and the bigger elements. Then as I finish with the bigger elements and the darker colors, I fill in with the lighter colors and the accents like leaves and flower buds, things like that. This buttercream was a little soft. It seemed like it wanted to slide down a little bit, so I popped it in the fridge before I did this mauve color in the same technique, with the same tip. It's not as deep of a color, but I wanted two contrasting colors. Actually, they're complementary colors, but two different colors of the same size and the same style. And with the leftover buttercream in the bags with the same star tip, I just did little little stars to fill in a little bit. Now I'm going in with just a round tip. I can't remember which number it is, but it's a small round tip. Not a tiny, actually more like a medium round tip. And uh, this was an ivory, tannish colored buttercream. I'm just doing little buds. I do go back in later and after it's crusted over, I tap down those points a little bit. It makes them look more like buds. And this one was just regular white buttercream with a smaller French tip. I did swirls and just dots. Or I guess they look more like stars, not dots. The point is to get different textures throughout. It's a little more interesting. But if you do too many colors and too many textures, it can get a little busy looking. So try to make sure that your colors are coordinating. And this is the same mint buttercream. I added a little bit more mint to it for the leaves. And I'm using a leaf tip to uh, so that you see them compared to the background mint color. And the trick with this is you, as you put it where you, the tip where you want it, you put it in so it looks like a duck beak, tall wise, not sideways. You squeeze, and as you pull out, you release. So you get that point of the end of the tip, of the end of the, of the leaf. You do it in different angles. Did the leaves more of a filler. Yeah. 
So here's my finished buttercream floral crown cake. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. And we'll catch you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.